evening, Tasha. Good evening, Treb. How are you doing this evening? I'm wonderful. How are you? Yes, I'm doing very well, and thank you. Um, I know that you have many questions about the students to express, so whenever you are ready to begin, you may. Okay. Um, I've got several questions, but I, um, I wanted to, I, I also wanted you to um, connect with my energy and um, tell me what you are pick, what you pick up on or any, anything that you think might be important to talk about. But I will um, start with a few things, um, spirit guides and orbs and um, I, Stuff like that, paranormal stuff, um, spirits. Uh, I'm a therapist, a massage therapist, and um, one of my one of my clients. Um, I had this overwhelming, loving, beaming energy go throughout my whole body, and then I was instantly told that they were a family member that have passed away, and they're here to love and support him. And um, I was just wondering what that was all about, and. I have a beautiful picture with um, these beautiful bright orbs um, all along my back. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about that first. Yes. Um, if uh, you give permission to connect your energy, if you are able to close your physical eyes, uh, to set an intent to push the energy outward, um, pushing it from the inside of the body to the out and continuously pushing it um, through intent. Uh, if I have your permission with you, I will connect to this. Yes, please. Yes! One moment, please. Yes! Um, which of these experiences do you wish to speak of first? Would it be that of the orb, or would it be that of the entity who connected you during the connection with his therapist, um, client, if you will? Um, whichever, whichever you'd like. Whichever. Either or. Yes! Um, for this client, um, approximately in what time period is this within? Mm. This was about, um, I'd say, a year and a half ago. Yes. Uh, one moment, please, as I will connect to this idea. Thank you. Yes. Um, this idea, the entity who comes through you, who says it is a family member, that connects to this entity, and um, this entity is able to experience your high vibrational situation. It also understands belief systems that allows the communication to go through you. So within this ideal concept of connecting, this message is being delivered through you to this entity, much as many humans are able to do um, once they have opened up energetically inside of them. But this also has a great deal to do with assistance from many entities who are within the Oversoul, or who would be, as you would say, a spirit guides that have come through from many previous existences with you. And they are also adding energetic proportions to help you connect these ideas. Um, the natural pathway of the human, human psychic experience is often that that allow crown chakra and third eye chakra to be a vibrational, natural high, and within your own uh, makeup or content, this has been true ever since childhood. Um, the opening of the crown and third eye chakra helps uh, engage into the energies that are there to assist communications of what most humans would think of to be a psychic nature. Um, at the level of the vibration that you are at, this is allowed to come in and out, but within this specific entity, it is lending a great a uh, much greater idea of energy than most humans who have passed. Many of the entities who exist within the afterlife experience are often able to practice within themselves to find 
um, how to use energy to connect to humans in a waking state, but they must connect to a human that is open to the experience as well. And this is well understood by the interviewer's past as well as yourself. Mm, beautiful. And was this entity um, his, his father or his uncle, do you know? Um, it does not come through in this nature. As oh. I look back into your time, I see an entity who connects to you very deeply, oh. um, very strongly in the one and two third area of years ago. And this entity connecting through you is of the highest probability that this was the communication. Mm, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I wish I could experience it all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, if you wish to experience this all the time, um, continue using exercises. Um, perhaps if you have not heard of specific meditative states or allowances within your own self to make an intent to connect more directly to the third eye and to the crown, there is not much work that has to be done within this vibration to be able to connect on a more permanent basis. Oh, that, that's wonderful. I will definitely look into that. Yes. And the orbs, do you know, were the orbs, um, was there any connection to me specifically or were, was it just the energy of the room that day? Um, me and my family were reuniting um, it was a beautiful day and we were just wrestling. So the picture is kind of funny because I'm on top of my uncle, like straddling him and these just beautiful orbs. So beautiful are, um, along my back. Yes. Um, this experience is a capturing, not only of a spirit guide energy, but also as well. Uh, as what you would say to be family entities who play a spiritual guide or a spiritual role. Um, within your own energy, there are two entities who have come from generations before your awareness to your family's history that have stayed with your family. Often this happens when an uh, entity creates a very tight bond with their own family, but the tight uh, bond that they share is not the highest um, reason why they are connected. They are also tend to be very worrisome. They are also very worried for the content of the entities in their family who are there. So they will often follow these entities throughout their existence. And when they are having children, they become uh, emotionally attached to the children as well. And then they would follow these children and the cycle continues. And oftentimes entities who cannot release this worry or fear of what will happen to their family will be stuck for several hundred years within this same cycle, looking over and um, protecting. And this is not a negative concept. It is not as if they are of a negative idea or mindset. It only means that they are still uh, in the afterlife, not connecting to the energies that will help them heal past this idea because their belief system is very strong in the concept of protecting the family. Wonderful, beautiful. Yes! And my, um, I've never, that's the only aware um, connection I've had with uh, spirit before. I, I don't know. You said that they were, there were two strong um, entities connected to me that you saw? Um, that are of the nature of the entities who are from the family. Um, so this is why oh. they are expressed in the picture as oh. your family is all connected. They okay. are perceiving these entities also as their family. Oh, okay, okay. And um, I'm not sure if you can connect to this or see this, but um, I don't know. I know that when someone becomes open and more aware of, um, you know, uh, other dimensions and other uh, realities and, you know, spirits, um, that more spirits are drawn to people like that. Um, but I was in my living room and I was closing the, um, the, drawing a blank, the blinds to the, to the sign glass door. And I saw a reflection in the window. Um, and it was like an Indian, it looked like an Indian man. Uh, do you, can you pick up on that? Am I sitting like on an Indian reservation or, um, do you know what that was all about? Um, approximately in what time period does this reside? Um, this was just like, I want to say maybe six months ago. Yes. Um, one moment, please. Sure. 
the energy within this concept is not truly felt, as there are entities who surround you all the time. Um, one that perhaps can appear in visibility will be there consistently, but will not be perceived um, until that very moment. And in this case, this tends to be an entity who is following or connecting to you as a spirit guide. Um, within the Indian nature or Native American ideas, you would perhaps see this. There is no specific nature of connection that is to any of the guides that you are carrying. But this does not mean that this is not a spirit guide. It only means that the energy is represented in a very different way. As many entities live in the afterlife or between carnations, they are truly designed to carry a specific energy set as a fractal. And whatever life most resonates with them is what signature they will carry. But whatever of their existence that resonates mostly with you will be the one that you perceive. So if you are perceiving this Indian entity, then it is because this fractal's life as an Indian resonates with you more greatly than perhaps its own perception as a samurai in which it has had its own perception of greatness in this existence. If this makes sense to you. Yes, it does make sense to me. Um, can you see me right now, Trip? I know that you're, you're connected and you're connecting to my energy, but are you, as a part of you, here next to me? Yes, there is a portion of my consciousness that is within your area at this time. Mm -hmm. But within the idea of seeing, there is no visible concept that allows to see with this amount of consciousness. If I was able to experience more separation of consciousness to send down to you, then I would be able to perceive more visually. But with the amount of consciousness that is sent to the host, there is not um, a great amount to break down ocular perceptions or um, build up of the physicality, if you will. It is not to read within energetic signatures. So as I perceive you, I am seeing several thousands of layers of energy within you. I am able to see the systems of chakras that you carry. And I'm also able to perceive um, connections that you have from you that are from the past or a probable future that tend to uh, stick out or to be great within your existence. I would love to hear them. <laughs> Um, which of these would you wish to hear? In the uh, past idea, there is many uh, concepts, and in the probable futures, there are also many. I think that the future is much more exciting than the past, but I would love to hear um, whichever one, whichever one sticks out the most. Um, within the energy of the probable future, there is one portion of your existence in the probable future where you are within the age of 53 and that becomes a very great excitement. In this portion of your existence you believe that the 53 area that you are within you have already been able to live your greatest excitements but in this experience you are able to elevate this quite dramatically. Um, Within the concept of what the trigger is, is not known very greatly. It is more on the concept of energetic levels shifting very high, even though it has risen much above the level in which you are in today. The 53 area of your timeline um, goes up well beyond even your higher from this time. And do you see, um, what else do you see? <laughs> Um, within this perception of the 53 area, is this what you mean? Um, any, anything. Um, I, I really strongly feel that, um, that I'm, I, I really feel that I want, maybe it's just because I want to, I want to channel, um, entities, um, to, you know, help guide, um, people here on planet Earth, um, I'm still kind of lost in, in where I, you know, should be at, really. <laughs> yes! This feeling of being lost is what uh, does not allow this highest probability that we have expressed previously to be one where you are connecting to entities, more verbally, if you will. But if you remove the doubt of the possibility, if you remove... Um, the second guessing of your own self's ability to do this, then your probability will be much higher to do so. 
And if you are able to raise this to be the greatest excitement of your existence, if you are able to place every spare moment that you have within your existence, dedicated to the ideas and concepts that help you allow to connect to a channeled entity, if you will, more deeply and thoroughly, then this will be a higher probability. The probability is, as I see for you now, as a probable future or as a probable past, are truly only connected to the overall vibration as well as the intent that you have placed, as well as the actions that you have placed, and as well as the beliefs that you have placed now. And this is what uh, makes up the formula that gives you uh, the connection to the probable futures and past. But the moment that you are able to change one of the drastic concepts, whether it is a belief, whether it is of an action, or whether it is of the overall intent and thought process that you have, then you will allow yourself to shift drastically a probable future or past. I feel very much like I um, don't want to be on planet Earth sometimes. Like I go through really high and low uh, emotions of wanting to be here and then like really wanting to be here and then other times not wanting to be here at all. Do you know why that is? Yes. Um, this is very common for many humans at this time who are awakening. The concept and ideas that you are now beginning to awake, that you believe that you are seeing the universe for what it is, instead of the things that have been hidden from you for so long, this gives you a new sense of inspiration and hope and excitement. But also you seem to uh, feel very limited in the concepts of abilities to break free of some of the worst suppressing beliefs that you have as humans. So when you are able to struggle with this idea, this allows and paves a way for you to see things in negative ways. This allows you to say, I have made great growth, but there are so many who I care of that I love deeply, who are still of a disconnected nature, who are still within the realms of having the veil over their eyes, yeah. that this can upset you and you perceive this as a negative idea. It also allows you to see the way that the world is working on a collective level, the governments, the wars, the violence, and you're perceiving all of this as negative. And it is because you have perceived this as negative that you no longer feel welcome in this area, because you feel as if the collective is not within the same vibrational pattern as you. But let us express this one concept, that if you did not believe all of these negative things within you could exist, all of these negative things you are perceiving in your own collective consciousness environment, if you did not believe that the greatest ideas can be present within your own, you would not be able to experience them. So once you believe to reverse these ideas, once you are able to express that there is no negative entities in my existence, when you uh, perceive that there is no ideas of great atrocities or wars or negative entities, then you will be able to experience this quite uh, more heavily perhaps, or more deeply. And once you are able to do this, then you are able to shift the reality and vibration that you choose to exist in. I think a big thing that um, holds me back from connecting with uh, with spirit is um, I, I don't believe in negative entities. I mean, I know that they they obviously exist, but I've never had any any experience whatsoever with one ever my entire life. But my mother, on the other hand, have has told me so many different stories about her experience with them. And I think that that's a barrier for me. Do you see that? That maybe that's maybe a barrier of why I haven't opened myself up to that? Yes. Many entities who uh, are excited of the ideas and concepts of channeling often believe that negative entities can attach themselves or negative entities may be within a possibility of an experience within themselves. This often leads to the deep subconscious seated fear of wishing to connect to a high level, of wishing to be able to astrally project or to channel or to do any of these various uh, requirements perhaps to be able to connect. So then they are painting this in a uh, picture that is of a separate color of what it truly is. 
understanding that you have never connected, this is for a very great reason. Because when you are trying to connect, when you are having these experiences, you are not within a negative experience. You are truly being your greatest self. And when you are able to be your greatest self at any given moment, within a day, um, at any given moment, within a now, you will never be able to connect to a negative entity. Because you are truly connecting to the seven density entity that is your lower soul. Negative entities cannot affect you. Even if they are in your perception, even if they are within the realm, uh, the physicality realm that you are within, even if they are within the astral realm that you are within and you can perceive them, they will not be able to negatively affect you. And this is what must be felt deep down, not as in the sense as I am listening to this and it sounds like it is correct, it resonates and I believe that this is possible, but this is a true foundation, strong belief. And once this becomes your belief, when you are able to experience any entity, it will never be of a negative nature. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes! <laughs> um, do you see any blockages in me? Um, yes, there is a blockage within the uh, concept of the first chakra. It is not a severe concept. Of, uh, there is perhaps a feeling of safety that is taken from you, uh, a feeling that you are not um, well in a current environment. Um, this often translates most humans in a uh, way of financial means, but also within the concept of the physical area in which they exist. And because this blockage is quite small and not obvious, it's very difficult to discern which of these two it is. Oh, well, that's, that's good, right? Yes! I mean, that's better than hearing you say that, you know, my heart chakra is closed or, or anything like that. Yes! <laughs> and um, I, I, thought I, I, I thought I heard um, you say once that, um, sex is not that you guys don't have sex on your planet or your yes. race. This is very true. And then, um, did you say that it was uh, a lower, lower consciousness thing? Or maybe I could be wrong about that. This is there is a reason? Not... Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Um, this is not considered a lower consciousness thing. It is considered the sexuality of humanity lies within the second chakra. And the highest chakra that you are able to experience is the crown chakra. And our vibrational level at its lowest is higher than the highest within you. So sexuality is not within our vibrational statute. There are races that connect to sexuality still in the fifth and sixth densities as a way to procreate or a way to have recreational energy. But within our own race, this was not needed. So you, you guys just pretty much have that wonderful feeling whenever you want. You can just think it and then have it, right? <laughs> yes, there is no um, explosiveness, perhaps, of energy, as you would see this, as our natural vibration is mm -hmm. uh, well above the highest experience of a human orgasm. Hmm. Oh, okay. And we are able to perceive this when we are connecting to the ones uh, in who humans would see as the ones who are supposed to be the closest, such as uh, children and wives and families, as well as experiencing a rock or a piece of water that is laying on the floor. We are able to connect to all of these with this great excitement. Mm, wow. And do you see um, any strong connections that I might have with any uh, future or past lives or entities um, on other planets that are close to us? Um, within your concept of probable futures, there are entities who are very connected to you. Um, within the idea of what's close to you or planets that are close to you, um, this often uh, is a very separate way to be able to perceive this as one entity would look at this as a different standard of measurement than another entity. But within your oversoul of the higher probabilities of connecting to probable future uh, versions of your own self, there are two entities who are sticking out very greatly. One of them is a female entity who is of a gray nature, 
uh, much as most humans would believe to be a gray or a Zeta reticuli. Uh -huh. uh, this entity is within uh, what you would say to be the fourth high density or higher fourth density. This is a type 2 entity, but it's not a negative um, mm -hmm. entity. It is one who is able and capable of having a caring relationship within its own environment. But there is also one entity who is of a fifth density nature, who is human-ish. Uh, let us say it is human with characteristics of the animal that you would perceive to be a canine. And this entity is within a planet that dwells uh, within the Carina constellation. Um, the host is aware of the name most recently due to an entity who is also within this constellation. But the stars that you are uh, having is much different. This entity of the entity who spoke to me in a previous time was from one from the fourth brightest star within the constellation, but within your experience with the canine entity, this is in a star that is not able to be seen with the physical human eye. It must be uh, a telescope, what you would say to be a HIP category star, one that you cannot uh, physically see, but it is within um, a very close perspective. It is closer um, than most of the average stars that you are seeing in the night sky uh, within a 62 light year area that is revolving around a star that is very similar to ours, a very small red star. Wow, cool. Yes! <laughs> and um, I don't know, are you able to, I, I don't have, the only kids that I have are two furry kids. They're my little dogs. And um, one of them, um, her health is not so well. She went blind several years ago. Well, actually, in the last, like, two years, it's been progressive. But um, is, there, is there any way you can connect with them? Do they have any messages that they, you think that they might want to share with me? Or um, if you could look into uh, Baby um, and see if her health is, is, if there's anything that sticks out or... Um, yes, perhaps I would be able to do this. Um, okay. First, if you are able to uh, bring them to a closer physicality to you, as close as uh, possible to you. Okay, okay, let me go. I gotta put my headphones down. Let me go grab baby. Hold on. Yes! Okay, I've got baby. I'm holding baby now. <laughs> yes! Um, one moment, please, as I try okay. to connect to this energy. Thank you very much. Yes! This entity has a loving spirit, but has a stubborn, energetic nature to this entity. Uh, oh, it will not oh my let gosh. you enter to the energy. Uh -huh. Very stubborn. <laughs> she is so stubborn. Yes! <laughs> Many of the animals that take upon this trait are very difficult for a type 1 entity whose belief systems are similar to mine of not entering an energy without a permission, um, it is very difficult to read. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's been so stubborn from the day that I got her. I mean, just so mean sometimes. I don't understand why, and I just love her and love her, but, um, you know, maybe yes. she's just, I guess maybe she picks up on, you know, my negative stuff or, I don't know. With the perceptions of animals, more specifically with the canine entities, these entities do not connect um, to the emotional state of humans as much as they do a physical state, uh, also a behavioral state. They are able to perceive your emotions quite well, but this is not what moves them. As in the connecting to a human, the love concept or the hate concept is the greatest two motivators for humans 
to work with each other or against each other, but within the uh, canine existence, this is not the case. Even if they are able to experience your love, and it is of great amounts, this is not what they appreciate within their own existence. What they appreciate is a stability and also the ability to either be uh, more dominant than the human or for a dominant to be more um, intimidating. Uh, not in the intimidating, but perhaps um, dominant in the way of I am the one who is leading and you are following or vice versa. Um, this is what appreciates the animal um, within its own self uh, much more than the ability to love as it is very easy um, for humans to love dogs but this will not make them good within itself. This will not make them break this stubbornness within them and many of these entities do not wish to break their stubbornness as that is a portion of their existence in their own journey. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to connect with this energy. Um, it's the first time I've ever felt this way towards another being. Um, I just felt this overwhelming uh, connection with this person. Um, I only saw this person on a few occasions um, at a, a community meeting. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to connect and see what kind of what the connection was, but it was overwhelming, and um, it was probably about mm, three years ago, and it was a male. Yes, um, it is possible that your energies have touched that I will be able to perceive this concept. But if it is not within this area, then I will not be able to enter the energy of another entity without this permission. Mm -hmm. um, one moment. If, if you um, are able to experience the concept of what this entity is to you, the feeling, to remember this feeling, to remember the physical nature of this entity, um, and to focus upon this, and okay. then I will be able to connect to you. Sure. One moment, please. Yes, um, this entity is what you would express to be a soulmate entity who has a lesson within your own existence to co-create, if you will. But let us express the concept so one does not have a definition that is separate than ours and misconfuse the idea. Within our own concept of what we express as a soulmate is, this means that this entity is within either your own oversoul or a uh, oversoul within the soul group, which is several of the seven density entities who travel uh, together, who connect together. So this is either a fractal of your oversoul or a soul group's oversoul uh, mm -hmm. that is highly connected to you, that has been through previous existences with you. Mm -hmm. And often you reinvite soulmates within your own existence so that you may learn a very specific lesson. Some soulmates are able to experience a vibration of bumping into each other into a uh, parking lot and being able to fight and this is the only time that they will experience each other. But often soulmates will connect very deeply and for long periods of time so that they may experience more of one lesson that needs to be experienced in this existence. Mm -hmm. So this does not mean that this is a very vital entity to the overall nature or that it is not a vital entity to the overall nature as the oversoul will not express this idea to me. But it does express that it is very resonant to previous existences as well as what you would consider to be a soulmate. So there is a lesson that you must have within your existence within this entity's experience. You mean like I need to connect with this person again? Um, let us express it does not mean again. Perhaps the visual stimulation that you have had has already been your experience that was needed. Um, but the oversoul does not communicate this concept with you because it does not wish you to um, have an experience that you would not have had 
or it does not wish you to not have an experience that you would wish to, um, it is what you would say to be a non-interference concept against the nature of the free will of the fractal itself. Mm. Okay. I'm kind of confused about what you just said, but... Um, yes, I, you wish us to express uh, perhaps in a, an example? Yes, please. Yes! Let us say that your meeting in this empty soulmate's existence is strictly to have met him at his community reach and then to have this great feeling and to sit for next several years wondering why you are having this feeling. And this wandering will lead you to a very great breakthrough uh, within your own self, and this will reflect back as a very great lesson. Uh, or it can be an experience where you wish to reconnect to this entity and connect, um, and you end up to be together for very long periods of time, and there are many lessons met. If you are truly um, to experience only one of these, then the soul does not wish to say, do not experience the second. Mm -hmm. Or if you are meant to experience both, it does not wish to say, go ahead to experience. Your own action of the free will of the fractal itself is what dictates your existence. There are always a way to find out if you are meant to connect to this entity again. And this is the concept of answering a one question. When you think of the idea of meeting up with this entity again, does it bring you great amounts of excitement? Do you wish to connect to this entity more than you have in the previous times? Um, I, I mean, the, the feeling of wanting to connect with this person, um... I've only thought about it a few times ever since I met this person a few, like three years ago. At the time, in when I was in his presence, it was a very strong feeling of wanting to connect and speak to him about this feeling that I was feeling, but I don't think that he would even understand what I was talking about, so I, I, I never did. Um, and so, yeah, the, the feeling is faded, um, but I, I just know that it was something I've never felt before. So I just was curious of what it was. And I had a feeling that it was somewhat of a soulmate and someone that I've had past lives with, what you said, pretty much. Yes! Um, may I express an idea to you? Yes, please. If you are within the reach of an entity whose feelings are similar within the next um, connection that you have to an entity. What has happened in your experience is that you are feeling a great connection, a great pull. This is often an indicator from higher self, a spirit guide, or directly from the oversoul to take action. This is why you had a very deep urge to connect to this entity. But as you go to connect to this entity, there is a fear. There is a fear of rejectment, uh, rejection. There is a fear uh, of not being um, adequate enough to connect to this entity in a way in which he will understand. There are many levels of fear that has blocked the experience. Mm -hmm. So within the concept of facing a next concept that perhaps the Oversoul will pull upon you, if you remind yourself that the worst that can have happened within that situation is when you go to experience this entity, he expresses to you that he is not sure of what you are meaning and perhaps you are uh, mentally crazy. This is the very worst that can come of this. But the greatest possible probability could have been that this entity was meant to play a very great role in your existence. So to balance the probable uh, future of connecting to an entity uh, for a very meaningful and soul sake concept compared to perhaps a slight to mid embarrassment within your own existence. This is a very um, leveled scale that you are able to choose with one benefit outweighing the um, non-benefit. Okay, I, I will definitely keep that in mind. Um, yes! I think you're wonderful. Thank you so much, Treb. I really am thankful for connecting with you and I, I love your voice and your energy and um, this is really exciting. I've been listening to a lot of uh, a lot of your sessions that you've had with a lot of people, and um, 
and I just recently spoke to Rob regarding uh, meeting you and how like terrified he was in the beginning because um, I guess you're really big and um, and you resemble a reptilian, right? Yes, within the physical existence, we are very uh, large and to a human standard, but also very reptilian in physical nature. Cool. Yes. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to be able to experience any any entities other than humans. I think that would be really cool, and I believe that that we will someday soon be at that point. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on the canine that I'm connected to? Um, the energy within this is not very uh, readable with any specific concept. Okay. The idea of where physically this entity is, um, how it's connected to you. This is more of the energy that I'm able to experience. Um, often within the more detailed descriptions that I'm able to give to entities, this is because either they have come to the host uh, with a previous request, so I'm able to take more of my consciousness and connect it to their own existence to see exactly what this entity is. But because it has come to a place with small amounts of consciousness given to the host this evening, mm -hmm. as well as the lack of availability of this entity connecting to you now. Um, this is why it is not experienced very detailed and is more vague. But if there is an experience in which this entity connects to you, or as he connects to you, I am connected to you, I will be able to perceive this in a much greater way. Okay. Wonderful. And um, canine, is that canine, is that feline? Um, the canine entity resembles that of a um, common dog within your own existence. Okay. Okay. Because I've always felt a very strong connection with um, lions, and um, I know that you know uh, the um, Yael, the Shalanaya, or um, the feline um, race. Yes, there are many feline races within this galaxy. There are oh. literally several thousands of them. Wow. wow. Yes. Hmm. Wow. I would love to experience that. <laughs> I don't know why. I just feel like I'm so bored on planet Earth. Like, I feel like everything's very boring. <laughs> and I want, like, to just go and be somewhere else and, and only know love and only experience that. <laughs> yes, and this is possible within your own existence to do the experiencing of love, the experiencing of entities that are uh, perceived to be outside of yourself. But remind yourself of this, that you are having several entities that are connected directly to you now that come from the same oversoul. These entities are also a portion of your own consciousness. Even though you do not perceive this in this way, as separation tends to be a perception of the collective of humanity, these entities are all directly connected to you. So if you see more connection of all that is, if you are able to see yourself as being a very loving entity, as being worth loving, as also being a perfect portion of the Creator's consciousness, if you are able to do all of these things, and to experience the excitement of connecting to other portions within your own self, even if it is not in a physical standing in front of and shaking hand way, it can be experienced in many other ways, through meditative states, through astral projected states, through conscious channeling states, through trans consciously, um, but also in the trans writing states, as well as feeling presence of these entities around you. And there are many that are around you um, quite often, as there are many humans who exist within this um, earth or a time or environment, if you will. So experiencing yourself must come first. And right. then through this experience of yourself, you will be able to perceive the experience of the different versions of yourself. And I do that through meditation, right? Yes, meditation is the greatest tool. It's the most commonly accepted tool. It is the one that allows yourself, through what some entities say, to be a permission slip. It allows you to go deeper into your own self, which then re-allows you to connect to things that you see to be external that are truly internal as well. 
all of the universe that you are seeing that is around you is literally a projection of your own consciousness. It is a co-creation of all entities who exist within the same shared perceptions. Yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that, um, uh, that everything is really inside of me. <laughs> yes, um, perhaps some ideology that will seem to be greater is perceiving it in a way that allows you to see many links of a chain that are hooked together and knowing that every entity is one link in the chain. Yes, they are their own link. Yes, they share uh, characteristics with the one next to them, but they are also very independent from each other. But the collective consciousness, all that it is, is truly a chain. It is all of these things connected as one to make an entire concept. And this is what oneness is truly about. If you are able to use this perception, um, many entities believe as the universe is inside of them, that within the physical concept of a soul, the entire universe exists. And this is not truly the way that this works, as the universe itself is one consciousness, and it divides itself to smaller consciousnesses. But this does not mean that the smaller consciousnesses are not attached to the larger consciousness in this. Hmm. Um, Treb, do you have um, a spaceship? Yes! And you can just get on it and go anywhere you want in the universe at any time? Um, within the concept of universe, this tends to be a greatly divided area. Within the fifth density, day-to-day -day existence, we tend to experience more of what is within our galaxy. Mm. Even though we are living much longer than humans, even though there are some entities within the fifth density who live several tens of thousands of years, wow. they are still not able to experience every entity within this galaxy. This galaxy is a separate entity from the galaxy next to us, so we share our common experiences within this consciousness. It is not until you achieve the sixth density consciousness that allows you to perceive um, many other galaxies as a collective consciousness. And what, what density consciousness are you at? I am what would be considered to be the fifth density consciousness. Um, this is within the same harmonic level as the sixth density entities, but we are still separated by amounts of consciousness, as well as various other physicalities. And, um... Uh, do you, are you connected in any way to the Silver Legion? Um, I don't know if you know who that is. It's uh, a, a group of all different kinds of races that um, pretty much help uh, planets to liberate the people of the planet. Um, within this concept, there are very many questions that must be asked in order to appreciate the idea of what you are expressing. The um, uh, the name that you have given this is the Silver... Silver Legion? Yes, this name the host is not aware of. Oh. So within the Silver Legion, this can be various amounts of groups. There is a one standard group that is what you would say to be the Galactic Council. Um, mm. This is a, a translatable term to humanity. And within this Galactic Council, there are literally thousands of subgroups of this. In these thousands of subgroups, there is also subgroups. So if you are saying the Silver Legion or the Association of Worlds, these are two separate entities. These are two separate groups of planets that collective consciousnesses connect to the other collective consciousnesses. And within this concept, being separate, they are still doing the same job. They are giving information sharing love and connecting to other entities. There are also several groups of what you would say to be type 2 entities. These are what you perhaps perceive as negative, but within the concept of negative, also understanding that this is only a perception, there are ones that are more malevolent than others. And the ones who are not so malevolent will go and group with other entities and also go to do what in their own mind is believed as helping other planets or to free them or relieve them. 
-hmm. Sometimes another type 2 entity that is malevolent will overtake a planet or try to manipulate a planet and this group will come and to interfere because they are feeling love for this group. Mm -hmm. But as they are doing this, they are directly interfering with the free will of the entities, not only on the planet, but also the entities who have to invade them, as this is a co-creation of two collective consciousnesses. In a type 1 environment, we will not step into any co-creation. Are human beings, um, are they categorized as an entity 1 or an entity 2 or both? Um, because humanity is not fully embrace the idea of fourth density, it is still a dividing period. Um, after a nine year period of the 2012, then you will choose the variant of the earth that you wish to exist upon. Mm -hmm. Humanity is going in both ways. Mm -hmm. There is one earth that exists within a collective consciousness that is moving to a type one, and there is also a version of earth that is going within to a type two. And right now, you are bouncing between the two. All of humanity is. And does that have anything to do with um, the, you know, the people that have been um, ruling the world, ruling planet Earth, and pretty much manipulating uh, the people here? Um, are they connected to, um, and obviously they're connected to malevolent beings, but um, I guess, I guess I'm just curious of like we agreed to to experience the suffering um that that people on planet earth um have gone through because of you know the controllers that have been in control for so long yes I don't know if that makes sense oh, okay yes this is really true this is a co-creation mm -hmm. because your planet's vibration was at a very low point um because the overall collective humanity was not of a fitting vibration to have um, non-interference. The entities who came down to you to manipulate your DNA, to use you as perhaps as you would see a slave labor. Yeah. Um, this is co-created as an experience of two groups of entities, two collective consciousness co-creations. And as the time of history progresses, as humanity changed, the collective change, and as it gets to a standard of what you believe to be civilization, this is where other entities who are more malevolent than the predecessor, predecessors who manipulate DNA, um, then they are to try to suppress humanity to even lower points. And this is where Earth has been up until now. But I wish to express also these concepts have no direct bearing on any entity unless they choose to co-create this experience as well. Right, right. Once yeah. you are able to break free of the idea and concepts of ones who suppress you, then you will be able to feel the true power that you have. Okay. Yeah, I just, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I just am happy that, that, you know, that we are being liberated. Um, and I just, you know, I know from the human perspective it's like why would i choose to experience this when i can choose to ex you know experience only love on another planet which i'm sure that in that state of mind you want to experience something different right we always want to experience ourselves in different ways i'm sure yes the idea of the oversoul the oversoul's mission if you will to come to a non-physical to a physical state is to experience all that is this is why even as fractals, once the physical death has taken place, there are literally infinite amounts of probabilities to be able to incarnate into any life that you choose to incarnate. But they will not sit within this afterlife period for long periods of time because this um, ability to have all things manifested, the ability to know things are much greater than you can in physicality, you are willing to um, pull this off of you and able to have an experience even if it is within the poorest country in the earth even if it is in the most violent portion of the earth because the oversoul craves experience and it does not judge an experience by negative or positive only but what can be learned by this 
Mm. Is there anything that, um, that you feel that I'm not picking up on or that I'm not learning that, that stands out for you or about me to you or, um, Within the concept of your own energy, there is only one observation that I wish to express to you. Um, and after this expression, perhaps uh, the time is beginning to become low. So okay. before I express this idea to you, do you wish uh, to have any last question answered? Um, I'm sure I could think of many more, but... Um... No, actually, I think this is probably the most important one. Yes, um, this concept is the expression of the first chakra, although it is not deeply um, clogged, if you will, or um, deeply malfunct, if you will. The idea of this first chakra is to release the concepts of fear. Um, there are subtle fears within your own existence due to the nature of the lives that are around you, of the things that happen around you. Taking back the power that you have as a creator is one of the very greatest things that we choose to teach humanity. Because it is the most important to be able to find the happiness in your own existence that you wish to create. Once you have the understanding that the things that are around you are only in a fearful state because it is reflecting um, what your consciousness is projecting through subconscious and conscious fears. Once you are able to experience the relieving of this, once you are able to experience I am a creator, I am perfect as I am, and I will trust the instinct that I have of love within me, this will be able to allow you to experience um, more free-flowing energy through the chakra, which will in turn make you feel much more whole as a human, as a spirit. And you are truly both of these, even though you do not resonate <clears throat> as often with the human version of yourself as you do with the spirit version. Understand that it is very important to have the human so that your soul may experience what it is here to experience. Um, and this is what I wish to express to you this evening. Thank you so much, Treb. Yes, you are very welcome this evening. It was lovely chatting with you, and um, I can't wait. I look forward to doing it again. Yes, and I look forward to speaking to you as well. Thank um, you. If you wish to experience my energy when the host is not connected to you, yes. express the idea that you wish to have um, a connectability to myself um, within a mantra and he will connect you to this information that will help call my energy whenever you wish to experience me. Okay, thank you. Yes, you are very welcome. Um, it has been a great pleasure again to speak to you this evening, to connect to another portion of my own self as you are connected mm -hmm. to a portion of your own self. And I wish to express great excitement with this idea. And with this being expressed, I will leave you this evening in love and in life, and we will experience each other again very soon. Love and light to you too. Good night. Good night, Trump.